Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing the Ashton Heritage Puro Sol. As per usual, this review is conducted using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can either use at home for your own reviews, or if you're in a hurry and don't have the time to watch the entirety of this video, just look in the description below where you'll find the full written review, where you'll find a final PDF version of this, which will give you a quick overview of the cigar and its characteristics. Furthermore, these cigars are being stored using the Bovado Acrylic Humidor that you can see beside me. As you can see there, just here. We store them with 69% Bovada packs and we monitor them with a Bovada Butler. We do this for a period of three weeks to make sure that they're properly acclimated and prepared for the review. The Ashton Heritage Puro Sol, as the name suggests, Puro Sol meaning pure sun in Spanish. That refers to the fact that it has been sun-grown. Ashton is a well-known brand with roots in Philadelphia. Its assembly, though, takes place at the Tabacalera e Fuente, I believe. It is constructed using what looks to be an accordion bunching style method, and it features an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. However, I don't have any information about the filler or binder, but I believe them to be from the Dominican Republic. This Vitola that I have in my hands is the mighty 7x52 Double Corona, but it's also available in Robusto, Gordo, Churchill, and Bellicoso as well. With that all being said, I'm going to jump straight into the review, and we're going to begin with the look and feel. So first of all, we're looking at a dried clay colored uh, wrapper and the body of the cigar generally has a nice even roll. There may be the occasional soft spot, but it's nothing disconcerting and we have a firm uh, spring when the cigar is pinched. The sheen that it delivers doesn't reveal many oils, although there is a little bit, and the veins are mostly on the re refined side, but you can occasionally get some, uh, some veins appearing along the wrapper. As for the aromas on the foot, I've noted cinnamon, barnyard, and a hint of tonka bean, quite mild overall, quite a, a classic combination as well. So let's see what we get in the pre-light. So the draw is ideal. Great airflow here. Uh, the flavors are much richer than what I smell on the foot. We're looking at uh, a combination of buttercream, some cinnamon, just as was detected on the nose of the foot, and some terracotta, so some dried clay, which is reminiscent of perhaps cigars from Cuba, although it's definitely not a Cuban cigar. So I guess the next thing is to light this up, so I'll see you in a while, as this is a double Corona. And here we are in the first third. I'm not quite finished with the first third yet, but I thought I'd do the video now. Uh, the burn line was perfectly straight at first, but now it's got a little wavy. But look at that ash. Isn't that fantastic? Great ash. I think I'm going to take it off, though. It, although it did resist quite nicely. Oh, nice and silky. Sacha Guitry would be proud. He was um, a French actor and playwright who was known to do that, or at least according to Zeno Davidoff, who uh, in, like, mentioned it in his book. Uh, so in terms of flavor profile, we're looking at quite a, a pleasant and balanced bouquet of some nutmeg spice, some charred thyme, and then there's a little bit, a little hint of terracotta dry clay, as I detected in the dry drawer, which could be potentially compared with a slight Cuban mustiness. Now it's not that overt, but it's certainly there, and it does add some pleasant uh, substance to the overall uh, experience in the first third. We're looking at a sort of mild to medium so far, leaning more towards mild. Uh, the uh, the mouthfeel is smooth, it's velvety. So far, the th first third is a very pleasant experience. Let's see how we get on. I'll probably come back when I'm around the halfway point. So I'm now past the halfway point in the second third, and uh, the flavors have certainly evolved, although they didn't evolve that long ago. It was just around the halfway point that we were starting to see uh, an evolution in flavor. The uh, terracotta element has pretty much subsided. That's faded away, as has the nutmeg and charred thyme. Instead, we have some bay leaf, some charred bay leaf, which still retains some of that herbaceous aromatic flavor. We also have some cacao nib that adds a slight substance to the overall bouquet, adds a gourmand property. And then we have a hint of molasses that really rounds out the flavors and adds some um, 
some potency to the, uh, the second third. It's evolved quite nicely. We're still in the mild to medium range. Maybe we're starting to edge a little bit more towards medium, but still, it is not an overwhelming cigar. Very easy to smoke and has a pleasant, creamy mouthfeel. Let's see how we get on in the final third. So I'm well into the final third now, and the wrapper's starting to crackle a little bit. It's not so bad, but I'm starting to notice it more and more. It's probably worth mentioning that actually when this was released back, I think in 2008, it featured a Cameroon wrapper, but today it's now an Ecuadorian Habana wrapper, as I mentioned in the opening of this video. So it's not the same as when it was first released. In terms of flavor, we got uh, a nice evolution here. We're heading now more into medium territory in terms of body, but the flavor consists of it's very caramel caramelized. You've got uh, a nice dose of syrupy, luscious flavor. Some cacao as well. So what was cacao nib before is now really much ch more chocolatey. And then we have a woody uh, component, which I would liken to rosewood. It's not like oak, it's not heavy. It's still very balanced and very pleasant. Overall, the complexity of this cigar is not so complex that it's gonna be full of nuances. In fact, it's quite um, easy to smoke, very approachable, and gives you a nice, uh, a nice selection of different aromas, but they're not going to be hard to identify. It's not gonna to be too nuanced. So it's got good complexity, but it's not too much either. The mouthfeel is very smooth, velvety, quite, um, it starts off light, gets heavier as you progress. It starts velvety and then starts to become creamy as you get towards the end of the second third. The astringence is perfect. You don't have any over salivation or dryness on your palate, although it does lean in terms of palate stimulation towards the front of the tongue. So you're gonna get more pressure and more stimulation here, but not really much going on at the back. And then when it comes to the life cycle, as I said, you do have a nice evolution throughout the cigar. There are changes in flavor that really do give you an adventure and a story. Then when it comes to the finish, this doesn't linger that long on the palate. You'll get it for a couple of minutes maybe. It could be nice with a palate cleanser such as, a, such as an espresso coffee, but otherwise it's not going to be there and keep giving you flavors after you've finished. And as for the residual scent in the room, it's very pleasant, very fragrant. It's not gonna be overwhelming and it's not going to suffocate you either. Next, talking about the burn and the combustion of the cigar. So the draw was consistent throughout the whole smoke. The temperature remains very, very cool throughout the whole thing. And then again, we are working with a ring gauge of 52 here. And then in terms of the backbone, I had some really nice ash several times on the cigar. The first third was excellent, but it did get a little bit weaker as I progressed, but still very good. And then in terms of the burn line, as you can see, it is a little bit wavy now, but not much that requires any touching up. It is perfectly fine if you don't want to uh, help your cigar on the way. Moving on now onto the overall experience. So here I have the band. It's a classic Ashton brand, uh, band. If you're familiar with the, S, uh, the VSG and other ranges from Ashton, it stays in line with that sort of regal, uh, luxurious presentation. And then the box, very nicely displayed wooden box uh, with an Ashton band enlarged across the top. And then when you open it, you have some ribbons, you have a uh, nice uh, paper covering. If you wanna see pictures of the box, I suggest that you head to the written review in the description below. As for the value of the cigar, you're looking at about $13 for the double Corona and then uh, about $11 for the other Vitola. What's quite interesting here is that the Churchill is about $11.60, whereas the Robusto, I think, is just $11. So you're only looking at 60 cents more if you want the Churchill, whereas the Double Corona is, gonna, is a little bit larger, but it's actually about uh, $2 more or a bit less. Uh, in, and then if you're looking to buy a box of 25 cigars, you're looking about between 20, uh, $250 to $300. I think this provides you great value given the experience. It's very luxurious, very uh, premium feel, and uh, is something in terms of occasion that can be used for a variety of different uh, situations. For example, you can smoke it quite happily at an exclusive lounge. You can enjoy it for a special occasion, or it's something that is perfectly suitable for smoking with friends or even on your own in the backyard or during a barbecue. This is more for me, I'd say an afternoon smoke, great as a digestif following lunch, or even in the mid-afternoon as, as a little break, or you can consider it in the early evening as an appetizer before a dinner. 
It's also a great cigar for beginners who are seeking to break away from very mild cigars and want to try something with a bit more body. It's also going to deliver them some very interesting flavors that they'll be able to explore. And finally, we're going to look at the pairings. And this isn't scored, this is just something that we have here. You're not going to see it like that because there's the light. You're not going to see it there either. You're not going to see this, are you? Well, anyway, the pairings are on the bottom right-hand corner of the uh, cigar formula. You can see it on the PDF version in the uh, full review in the description below. For food, I would suggest uh, if you want to have it as perhaps a digestif following lunch, so if you have a dessert that consists of tiramisu, this would be a great choice. You're going to get some of those gourmand flavors. There's no coffee notes in the cigar, but some of the creaminess, the gourmand chocolate flavors, they're going to be really extended if you have the cigar afterwards. Alternatively, if you like a good chocolate chip cookie, that would be a great pairing with this as well. But if you want it to be more paired or following a savory dish, consider something like a lamb shank or a lamb shoulder that's been roasted with herbs. That would be a great choice. And finally, the beverages. I wouldn't go for um, a scotch whiskey, perhaps, or even a bourbon. These might be a little bit too heavy for this cigar. Consider perhaps instead an Irish whiskey. It's going to be a little bit more floral, a little bit playful, that would go quite well with the cigar's properties. Alternatively, if you're quite fond of brandy, consider a fin champagne cognac, such as the uh, Hein Rare VSOP. That is still quite playful, quite youthful, but it does have body and substance and flavor that would pair nicely with the cigar. And of course, one thing that I love having with cigars, which is always, a, always very challenging living in France, is root beer. Rather than going for a coffee, which would be very good with the cigar, consider instead a root beer, especially an artisanally crafted one, that's going to have some uh, herbaceousness and some vanilla flavor that would go very nicely with the cigar. That's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment if you have any questions about the Ashton heritage or if you'd like to share your own experiences. Until our next video, head to bespokeunit.com and see all the other men's lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you will love.